the record with Young Dro is called Name On It. It's actually Name On The Remix. Uh, dope track, man. Again, man, Name On It, it represents so much more. You know, it's not about, you know, all the Hollywood glamour stuff, man. It's about putting your name on what you believe in, man. Whether it's your success, whether it's your family, your money, you know what I mean? You know, your cars, your house, you know, put your name on it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's about owning things, you know? We so we see so many others who, who own it and don't, you know, may not want to share that with us, how to get it, you know? So we got to get out here and grind for it and get it for ourselves. You know, and I feel like if you hustle for it, man, and, and you grind for it and you sacrifice for it, then you have the right to put your name on it. So put your name on it, man, for real. How'd you guys link up initially? We actually linked up initially, man, through the uh, Hustle Gang Tour. The Hustle Gang Tour started in Mobile, Alabama, and um, crazy story, man, but I received a phone call from the Spot Soul Kitchen that actually had the show there, and they asked me to come on board, you know, kind of help promote it, as well as perform at the show. So we worked it out. Ironically, uh, we worked with some of the same people as far as, you know, our publicists, uh, product, pro project manager, you know, all of the, we worked with the, some of the same people, so it, it just really gelled. But anyway, uh, did the show at Mobile, rocked it, killed it. I got invited to go to Birmingham, Alabama to do the second date, killed it. Then I also got invited to Knoxville, Tennessee, North Carolina next. After the North Carolina show, I had a chance to meet up with Tip. And, you know, by that time, man, I was grinding, I was hustling, I was networking, building rapport. So everybody knew who I was, you know, by that time. So I had made that impression. And uh, as far as me and Joe go, man, Joe heard the record. You know, we got together, hooked it up through our people, and the rest is history, man. So, I mean, we have that real good connection, bro. So, you know, Name On has been out there for a minute before we did the remix. And we just put the whole push with it through the tour, did Texas, did Florida, uh, did the finale here in Atlanta at the Coca-Cola Roxy. So it was about 10 different days, man. So, again, it, it was more... It jailed, man. It was very organic. It wasn't nothing just out the blue or anything like that, you know. So they heard the rocker, man. Joe heard the rocker, man. He loved it. He jumped on it, and we rocked it out, bro. Did you do the record together in the studio, or was it one of those Pro Tools uh, trading situations? Actually, once again, like, my verses and stuff was already at 12. So that's the studio that Hustle Game was recording at, uh -huh. one of the studios. So, you know, it was kind of like a situation where he was in the room, he heard it, like, yo, you know, that, that bro, right? You know what I mean? So uh, it was a, it was an opportunity there to get him on the record. You know, I got the phone call, so it was all good. I trusted. I mean, it drove, you know what I mean? So I didn't have to, like, drive all the way back to the A to look over his shoulder to make sure he was going to do the record right. I knew he was going to be on the record right because I could hear him on the record, you mm. know? So that's the cool thing about features, like, you have to hear the artist on that song. And a lot of times, man, we just put names on songs just to put names on songs, but it don't jail because of the fact that you're not really listening to see if that artist can actually fit on that record. And that record is a perfect fit. Uh, it was produced by Cheese Beats, you know, who also did uh, We Be In The City, you know, with Dro. So it was a perfect fit. You know, if you kind of listen to both of them, got close to the same tempo, same flow, you know, so it was, it was a beautiful situation, man. It was just organic and we jailed and we killed it. So the record wasn't intended for him, but it made sense. It made plenty of sense, man. The record wasn't intended for bro, but at the same time, it was intended for him. You know, that's one of those situations where if you just do the work, you never know how, what direction it may go to where you do have that other voice that can go on it to be like, you know what, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's a, another example of just doing the work. If you have enough work, you know, you may have that that golden rocker that's sitting right there that you didn't even think would be the one. The next thing you know, it is the one because you added the right voice or the right uh, push with it. You know. Now, when you originally got the beat from uh, Cheese, yeah. uh, was that an easy record to uh, record to? Was it instant? Yeah, man. I was instant. Matter of fact, man, all the records I got from from Cheese, from Rock and Main, uh, from 808 Mafia, man, like everything that you hear on the project, everything that I recorded was like right there on the spot. You know, so it was like I come in, man, I, you know, and you play a couple records. Uh, whatever record grabbed me, it was like, yo, that's that one. You know, let's do it. And, you know, we, it was, again, it was just organic. You know, so I didn't get any tracks and take them home and, and write them. You know, the ones that I did get like that, you know, they were stuff that I did like maybe later on down the line. But the ones that really popped the hardest was the ones that was done right there because you was in the essence of it. You was there with the producer. You was there with the engineer. You was putting those ideas together. You know what I'm saying? You was with your A&R putting those ideas together. So, you know, it was just a beautiful situation, you know. So I write all of my material, but it's always good to have good company around you. Not no yes, man, but the good company around you be like, yeah, that's it. Nah, bro, that ain't it. Hey, bro, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? 
you know, we put a group effort behind it. So when you got those million dollar ears in one room, man, you can't go wrong. But this record in particular, not the other records you're talking about on the project, this record in particular, when you got the beat from uh, Cheese, yeah. you, you you were in the studio with them. Yeah, I was in the studio with, with Cheese. Yeah, okay. I was in the studio with Cheese. Matter of fact, all the producers, I was in there with them. So we went, you know, we had real sessions. That's why I had to make sure that I made it there on time <laughs> to be able to, to, to get in there and go to work, man. Like, it wasn't no play play. So we walk in the door, man, we go to work. So when me, me and myself, myself and Cheese got together, you know, it was... Like when he played it, by the time he got to probably the second loop, you know, the hook was done. You know, he walked out, came back in, the verse was done. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it just jail like that, bro, for real. Mm. Now, when you got the uh, record back uh -huh. and you heard Young Joe's verse, yeah, um, you were happy with it. Hey man, I was, you know. Well, I wasn't really surprised, but at the same time, was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's kind of like going to Disney World. You know what Disney World is going to build back, but it, it, when you get there, it's a totally different experience. So it's like I knew he was going to kill it, but when I got it and I heard it, bro, it was like a totally different experience. It was like, yeah, you know, this is it. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, fit on the And he got on there, he repped that thing. He ain't do like no, you know, no bubblegum type feature. Let me just do it, you know, and, and, and get brush it off type thing like bro really went in on it so that's the reason why you see us jail so so hard together like in the video and you know what i'm saying like in the shows or whatnot you know what i mean like it is is it's authentic bro what if he uh see because i always wondered uh, -huh. uh if you in a situation like this where you didn't record it live with them and you're getting the verse back what if it didn't fit what if it wasn't what you expected would you have made him do it again? Would you have just accepted what ha what what occurred? Nah, like, we would we would we would have moved on to something else. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. again, it it wasn't for his name. You know what I'm saying? It's because it was art. It was it was it was a great feature. You know what I'm saying? It was it was a comp a composition. You know what I mean? So it wasn't just again. I don't do features for the name. You know, and I, and I know a lot of cats do it. And a lot of times you hear songs, you be like, eh, they don't really fit on that. But I understand he got damn on it. You know, with the politics and stuff like that, which is cool. That's cute. But I make real music, you know what I'm saying? So when I heard it, I knew that was it. But if it wouldn't have been it, then it wouldn't have been it. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> I ain't no gray ass with that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. Did he out-rap you with his feature verse? I think Joe did his thing, you know what I'm saying? I don't really look at it as out-rapping because he held his own and I held my own, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, if the public want to do that, you know what I'm saying, go right ahead. But I feel like he held his own and I held my own, you know what I mean? Like, it was that, that one-two punch. Because you know I mean? that's the uh, another policy I wonder how rappers deal with. Because you get the verse back. Yeah. Let's say he does outshine you, mm -hmm. right? Is that a situation where you fix your original verse? Is that a situation where you add a third verse to balance out the record? Just curious on I what mean, the policy is. I mean, honestly, you better do something. I mean, you don't want to drown on your own record. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like you better do something real quick. You know, okay? and, and the reason why I say that, because I've been on other people's records and and you know like I, I went in so they had to go back to the drawing board and I encouraged them to go to the drawing board but it wasn't me trying to go on there to to, to crush them or nothing like that it was me giving my all you know what I mean like if you ask me to be on a song you like bro I want you to feature on this song and bro I'm a feature on this song I'm gonna give you everything you feel what I'm saying and if you if you feel like Yo, well, bro, what you think about this? I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Or, yo, man, let's fix this. Let's do that. Because it's a group effort. You know, I only sound good if he sounds good. He only sounds good if I sound good. So, again, man, we held our own on that thing, bro. Is that cheating? Like when an artist, okay, you get, uh, let's tur turn this in terms <laughs> of you. Yeah. Okay, you're asked to do a feature verse. You do it. Mm -hmm. You kill it. And then you find somebody else fixes their verse to, uh, uh, balance out the record is that cheating because you can't go back and fix yours and they were able to I mean to be honest with you when I, if it's myself when I give it to you I ain't got to go back and on I ain't got to go back and redo nothing you understand what I'm saying cuz I'm gonna give it to you it ain't going I don't need four five verses you know what I'm saying like I understand a lot of cats do that maybe like it's not the one for you but when I send it off I'm sending you off my best I'm sending you off what I know gonna be it so if you come back and you go, and, and, and let's say the people say you go hard, I might even feel you go hard. Man, we're going to keep it like that because I know I didn't come slacking regardless. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I love it, man, when the other artists do what I do because nine times out of ten, if I'm on a record with you, I'm a fan of your work anyway. You know what I'm saying? So 
you know, it, it's always love. So is that looked at as disrespectful or annoying if they fix their verse to balance out yours or no? Honestly, to me, on a business aspect, I want them to fix it. I want them to balance it out because we're not making the music for us. We're making it for the public. We're making it for the people, for the consumer. You know, we got to give them our best. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, yeah, let's fix it. You know, if, if mine need fixing, you know, like, bro, you know, maybe you need to go back in there and do the hook like this. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to listen to that. We're going to keep what we had. We're going to go in there and I'm going to do it like that. And we're going to compare to see which one is the best because it's a group effort. You know, it's a business venture. You know what I'm saying? It's not a battle between myself and somebody else. You know, I'm, I'm not going to battle the person to rock with me. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm going to give it to them. You know what I mean? Because of the fact that I got to give you my best. You know, that's, that's how I show my respect towards what you do. So. so from start to finish, how long do you think this record took to complete? Uh, the remix? Yeah. Start to finish, I mean, it was really actually knocked out about 24, 48 hours. Mm. You know, when, when bro heard... But, when, but let's, let's include the original time you took to do the record, uh -huh. then you added them on the remix if you included the whole thing. Two months. Two months. Two months top. Because, I mean, when we first did the record again, we had to also dissect the record to make sure if it was going to be one of the records for the project first. You know, so you have that time in. And then when it came to, okay, we're going to test the records, we're going to test, test it, you know, in the waters as far as on the actual Hustle Game Tour, it wound up being that record. So, you know, we was branded it. We had the all uh, the merch for it. We had the T-shirts, the, the cups, the whole nine. And it was a song that was grabbing the people, you know, so, so we knew it was a hit right off the off the jump because by the time I got to the, the second hook, the crowd was screaming name on it. You know what I mean? So we knew it was a hit. So it was a situation where... Again, he came in, he heard it, you know what I'm saying? He had permission to be in there because it's all good. We all found when he heard it. You know, I was like, yo, because I actually even said, like, man, if Joe come through, though, let him check out the record. You know, and he did that. He loved it right off the rip. I don't think he just would have did it, did it just to be doing it, you know, because he, he went went right on the head, man, hit me FaceTime, like, bro, this is it. You know what I'm saying? We, we going to do this right up. And we did it, you know what I mean? So, you know, we're looking at about two months because the most of the time came from, again, dissecting those 40 down to the seven. Uh, the music video, how long after the song was recorded was the video shot? About a month, about a month. Because again, uh, he actually did the song right before the last uh, Hustle Game tour show in Atlanta. So we still had that going on. You know, so we kind of had to get all of that out of the way. Also, too, they were still finishing up on the We Won't Smoke uh, album, you know, with Hustle Gang. I was still finishing up on our project, you know, getting the campaign together and things like that. So we had to just pretty much fix the schedules to where we can be able to get together. And I think it's pretty cool that we were still able to do it within that month of time based on all of the stuff that we had going on. Mm. And uh, what's the reaction to you performing the record? I mean, the reaction to the record being performed, man, is... is crazy. I mean, it's, it's outstanding, man. It's bubbling. Uh, right now, man, it's, it's going like full-fledged on two radio stations, man. We did all this independent, you know, uh, you know, it was getting really good response, good traction. You know, the downloads are looking good. We're getting the response that we're looking for, you know what I mean? Like, if the people behind it, if they're requesting for it, if they're asking for it, if they're buying it, I mean, that's pretty much the proof in the pudding, you know what I mean?